Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I title this message, Before You Make an Accusation. Before You Make an Accusation. Sometimes people will do some things, some things that will upset you, some things where you will think quite ugly about what they're saying, what they're doing, and then you will assume that that individual is up to no good. Now, sometimes your accusation is justified. But other times people are doing some things because God is up to something. Now, let me be clear. If you are one who has decided to trust in the Lord, you have decided that you want to pray about someone or a situation. You have to sit back and watch the movie, if you will, unfold. That means that God may be setting some things up to slowly but surely let whatever it is that you prayed about come to pass. But sometimes things are not going to come to pass because we immediately assume that something is evil or dark or ugly when in all actuality, God is working a situation out on our behalf. For example, there was a time where I was quite disappointed at an individual who always had something negative to say about how organized and clean I was. He wanted to just take everything that I was doing and find some kind of fault with it. The reason for this was because he was quite annoyed at himself because he wasn't organized and nor was he a clean gentleman. He came across very charming and sweet and polite, but if you were to go home with him, you would clearly see that this man was not organized and nor was he the type of individual who cared much about cleaning up after himself. And so repeatedly I had gone to the Lord about this sort of thing over the years. And lo and behold, if God didn't make some things happen. The individual ended up being put in a position where he had to clean after other people. I'm telling you, God is good. You see, sometimes you've got to be careful pointing the finger at individuals, assuming the worst about them, assuming that they are not the type of people that will do this or do that, whatever that this or that is. I don't know because I'm not in your shoes. But sometimes we're pointing the finger and we are having issue with folks when in reality we have our own blues and we're projecting certain things onto other people. There may be an individual that's doing that sort of thing to you and you don't like it. Why is it that this person has a problem with me? Why is it that this person is always nitpicking? I mean, I'm just doing what's right. I mean, you could take what I'm doing, put it in front of a panel of judges, and they would all say, child, you're doing the right thing. So why is it that certain people or groups have a problem with what I am doing, you see? You see, sometimes people are making accusations because, once again, the enemy is at work in and around them. The enemy doesn't want that person and that person could be you coming up higher. You see, if I'm bettering myself and I've got a lot of negative folks around me, then they are not going to support me. You see, now, if you have an accuser that's in your camp, somebody who is just falsely accusing you of a whole lot of things and you know your hand is not guilty then it would make sense to go to the Lord and pray about this person and ask that God intervene, ask that justice be served. And I would direct you to scriptures over in Psalms, the kind of scriptures that David was praying to the Lord about Saul. Saul and his army was after him because David was going to be king. And because Saul he had some mental issues and because Saul was jealous, <laughs> right? So the accuser can rise up because there's a lot of emotional stuff that's going on with that accuser, you see. 
And it really isn't so much about you as much as it is about what their relationship or lack thereof is with the one true God who most likely is trying to get them to a place where they understand that he is in fact real and that uh, there are children of God and that if you mess around a little too much with children of God, then I'm going to have to take care of some things. I mean, God teaches some people lessons and they don't have to believe they can just look around and see, wow, every time I accuse somebody of something, it's always backfiring on me. That's because accusations sometimes are just wrong. <laughs> They're just wrong. And so when you do that enough times, it's going to be a problem for yourself as well as others. And so you got people who are like this that will do this sort of thing because you just happen to be on the side of God. Now, I know for some of you all, you're not always, you know, going to be on point. And hey, it is what it is. I mean, I have my moments where I'm not on point either. But we take all of our burdens over to the Lord. We say, Lord, you know, this particular day I was going through a lot and I did falsely accuse someone of something I had no business accusing them of. And so I'm trying to make wrongs right. But this person is still, you know, holding grudges. So I put that individual in your hands. And so that's just what happens. And then that person over time, they will feel like, wait a minute, I shouldn't keep holding grudges. You see, I think maybe I should just let this thing go. I was innocent in this and this person, they accused me, but they're trying to make wrongs right. So, I mean, I shouldn't keep holding grudges. You see, God will move on a person's spirit to do just that. But I will tell you that sometimes we're looking at situations and we're thinking the worst. And when we're thinking the worst about some things, that's when God will provide evidence that that person or that situation isn't what we think. You see, there was a time where I was thinking that someone's rules were quite strict on a couple children. And then as I got to learn more about what was taking place, I found out that the person suspected that those children were up to no good. And so later some information had been revealed and sure enough, if there wasn't something up. So we assume some things, right? Oh, this person's so harsh or these rules or, you know, they're disciplined, but we don't live in that household and we don't know what's going on. You see, all we know is just whatever that child may tell us, or all we know is just what, uh, you know, a friend or somebody um, who doesn't want certain information to get out. Um, and that's all we know. But God will reveal some things to us. And so before we get all judgmental talking about why is she being this way or why is he being that way? And some of you all may be in some relationships wondering why a parent is acting in a certain way. Are you with that child all day, every day? Are you proactive in that child's life, not just handling a responsibility here or there, but are you really going all out, uh, disciplining the child, uh, training the child, taking the child somewhere? You see, as you get to know more about children, then you realize why some children have harsher punishments than other children and why some children are so easygoing and others are just ridiculous to deal with. You see, but once again, you can accuse somebody of acting a certain way without getting all the details. And then when you get the details, you know, then you're feeling a little bit embarrassed, ashamed or possibly, you know, upset about it because you should have never assumed wrong about someone without getting all of the necessary details. Uh, never accuse someone without doing a thorough check without, you know, having other people on board to help out with the situation. Um, you know, once again, that can ruin relationships, a false accusation. Okay. Or taking up for someone, but yet you don't know all of the details. Once again, well, I'm gonna take up for her, but you don't know. She's known for telling lies. Someone tells you, Oh, see, I didn't know that. That's why you should just mind what you say before you accuse someone of something you see, or, 
You may have heard through the grapevine about a story within a family and why somebody is acting a certain way, but you only talked to one person. You didn't talk to both. So you are only given part of the story. And so people who are the type that like to jump on board based on whatever they hear uh, or make false assumptions on people just because uh, these are individuals that once we recognize that they don't want to hear both sides of a story, we mark them and we do not communicate with them any longer. Or they may not even ask any type of information Uh um, they may just want to ignore you or distance themselves from you without uh, giving you a chance to speak. Once again, we mark those individuals because they're not worth the time, the effort uh, or too much of anything if they're going to jump to conclusions. An intelligent person is going to look at all aspects of a situation. They're never going to just listen to one person and one person only. An intelligent person does necessary research. Uh, they will also interview others. They will get background information um, on all parties. Uh, they will uh, test the spirits, if you will. But they're not going to just go along with one voice just because that person carries a certain title or because that person has bought them some gifts uh, or treated their family members quite nicely. But we do have those that are quite ignorant in that way. You may have witnessed this sort of thing take place in your own family or elsewhere. And you said to yourself, I mean, this is ridiculous. Why would they even do this? Why would they just take one person's opinion and not investigate? Because this is the kind of ignorance that some people who are not walking with the Lord like they're supposed to exhibit. Okay. God is an intelligent God. He's not a stupid God. He's not an ignorant God, but we've got some stupid and very ignorant types of individuals. So before anyone jumps to conclusions about anything, make sure that you get all necessary information. Slow down a little bit before you jump to conclusions. If you're not willing to talk to the other party, then you shouldn't be formulating your own opinion on things based on possibly 10, 15, 20, some 30 some years ago. Uh, you know, some incident that took place because some people will draw on past experience and then they'll say, well, maybe this person did say this or did do this. You know, and once again, people change. A lot of people change. There are those that won't, but there are others who change. And so, you know, we've got that sort of mindset at times when we are a bit biased, when we're dealing with our favorites. Um, and so God, he's not pleased when we do that sort of thing. He wants us to draw near to him because he's the righteous judge. Okay. He's the one that knows the details. Uh, he knows what is going on inside a person's heart, inside their mind. Okay. And a lot of times we think wrongly, we jump to conclusions. Um, and then that's when we end up getting humble. Um, there are times where, uh, people, as I mentioned in, uh, an earlier example, uh, there are times when people are going to have their share of the blues based on an accusation. And then the Lord will, uh, allow some evidence to show up. And then, uh, that person is redeemed. They are free. They are up out of captivity. Okay. Uh, and if we're not willing to just face the truth and accept the truth, uh, then there are consequences to that, too, because we're not to hold people accountable to things that are not factual, that are not truthful. OK, um, but sometimes people will do that sort of thing because they want their accusation to be proven correct, even though it's wrong. OK, God sees through all of this foolishness that people come up with and they think they're very intelligent and they're not. God is highly intelligent and he sees and he also will deal with those who play these little mind games on people. So that is it. If you were thinking about accusing someone, I'm sure after listening to this message, you're going to think twice about it. That was the whole point. God wants you to be slow to anger. OK, and uh, he doesn't want you jumping on a phone and uh, jumping up in people's faces and ripping and running here, there and everywhere on false accusations. OK, so blessings to you. 
And please do check the description box for anything that might be of interest. You've been listening to YouTube NM Enterprise 7. Subscribe today. Also, if you haven't given, we do welcome donations. Thank you, as always, for your support.